And a pleasant good evening and welcome into a Labor Day holiday special edition of the Bears Coaches Show with head coach Matt Nagy brought to you by Whipley CPAs and Consultants. Our guests tonight, President and CEO Ted Phillips and General Manager Ryan Pace. Jeff Joniak with you until 8 o'clock tonight here on News Radio 105.9 WBBM. And typically, fellas, in years past, we uh, would gather around in the Peyton Center for a nice group discussion with our Bears season ticket holders and break it all down. But the pandemic still a complicating manner, so we come to you tonight in a different format on Zoom calls from Hallis Hall and home. We'll begin with Matt. Uh, you know, 2021 off to a more traditional start, I'd say, than 2020 when there was no preseason. But for you and your team, did it feel normal? Yeah, you know what, Jeff? It, it definitely felt a lot more normal than last year. You know, last year was pretty crazy, but we got through it and I think for a lot of our players, uh, just to be able to have meetings together and see faces and and uh, be able to do football, play football, practice football, everything about football is back. So we love that. We're ready to get going. Ryan, you've talked to the team in years past. Did you this year or will you this weekend? If so, what will your message be to them? Yeah, you know, I did, Jeff. I think, you know, I just talked to them about the process that goes into the roster coming together. And really, you know, everyone arrived here in different ways and there's a lot that goes into that process and it's not always about the best athlete. It's about the best fit for the culture and team chemistry that we have. And, you know, I talked to them kind of, you know, it's on us, you know, to give them the tools to develop as players with the, with our staff and our facilities. But, you know, Jeff, every year it resets and we owe it to each other to, to maximize the opportunity we have this season and, and have no regrets looking back. Good evening, Ted, and uh, a lot going on from your desk as always. So give us a state of the franchise a little bit. Hey, Jeff. Um, well, you know, at any time you head into the regular season, it's always an exciting time. Um, and just like our fans, we're, we're really anxious to see how the months of hard work, some of the difficult decisions that went on in the offseason, how it all unfolds on the field. And, you know, like you said, we're not past the pandemic yet, but we have learned how to adjust. And most importantly, it's great to have fans coming back to Soldier Field. We've missed that home field advantage. We missed it last year. So we're really anticipating the energy of the crowd every week. And, you know, our fans always travel well, too. So we hope to have great attendance from Bears fans during our away games. And you can tell the fans are anxious to get back to it because season ticket renewals, about 98%. Sweet sales are up. Sponsorships are up. So it's time for Bears football. We're all excited. Uh, they'll be there in L.A. for sure, and you can count on it. They will be in Vegas. <laughs> Hard yeah. to get a flight for if Vegas right. this year, indeed. Uh, Matt, you know, you're, you're the head coach. You've been now, this is year four, but you're a fan too. So like everybody else, what are you most looking forward to seeing from your 2021 Bears? Yeah, Jeff, the biggest thing for us is um, – Every year is a, is a new year, and, and I think uh, going back to OTAs, um, just, uh, the relationships that all these guys have developed over the years, and then for some of the new players and new coaches that have gotten here uh, this, this year, it really there's just a really cool energy and a really neat vibe that's going through the building. Uh, we took it into training camp, and now I also think towards the end of that training camp, you feel like everybody's ready to, to get to these season games and, and to really – make them count and see what we're all about. I mean, that we're going to get tested uh, from the very first play of the first week. And, uh, but that's, that's why you play this sport to compete, to do it together and to show uh, how, how your, uh, your, your teammates all work together. So our guys have worked hard to get to this point. Now it's time to get going. Matt, have you named captains? Will you this year or will you do a week by week thing? No, we will do that. Uh, Jeff, we have not done that yet, but it'll be week to week. And uh, typically what we'll do is we'll do that in the middle of uh, middle of the week, heading into that Wednesday of uh, each week. Ryan, how do you feel about the process uh, as it pertains to quarterback? Because I could have started this show by just saying, okay, everybody, because they asked the same question, when are you playing Justin Fields? And, you know, that would be the question of the day. But the starting quarterback, Andy Dalton, preparing as well as rookie quarterback, Justin Fields, how it was all handled. Yeah, you know, Jeff, I, when I think about that, you know, it's a credit to Matt. It's a credit to his coaches. Just, you know, ensuring that each one of those guys received valuable reps. And, you know, I look back and Justin had the highest offensive play time percentage amongst all first round rookie quarterbacks this preseason. So you see it there. And, you know, there's just a balance, you know, Andy getting prepared to be our starting quarterback uh, while also while Justin's growing. And again, it's a credit to our coaches uh, that they handled that the right way. Ted, you mentioned first time back at Soldier Field for the opener on September 19th uh, against the Bengals. What 
should fans know? Because I would think patience is paramount uh, because there are protocols involved. No doubt. Um, they should know that their safety is, is uh, paramount. Um, stringent cleaning protocols remain in place. There's, there's a mask mandate for indoor spaces throughout all of Chicago, that includes Soldier Field. So areas like the club lounges, restrooms, suite corridors, um, basically any enclosed area at Soldier Field, you have to wear a mask. Um, you do not have to wear a mask in the seating bowl, but if fans feel more comfortable doing that, that's fine. Um, we're going to be at full capacity, so that's, that's exciting. So we do encourage fans to show up early, void the lines. Um, tickets are 100% mobile. And this year, fans will not have to take their keys and cell phones out of uh, their pockets before walking through magnetometers. And we're hoping that uh, that should aid in the congestion at all the gates. Hey, Matt, uh, there's a, a chunk here of four days off in five. Uh, good rest after all that camp time. And then Wednesday, when you get back to work, uh, it's going to be uh, all systems go for the L.A. Rams. Yeah, the, these guys, they look forward to those uh, three to four days off that they get here. They, they, uh, they just they tax their bodies physically and mentally so many days in a row. And they get to a point where you can kind of feel it. You, everybody, coaches and players, you can kind of get to that point where you say, OK, it's it's time to get a breather. And then when they get back, it's time to get right after it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're currently at a spot right now where, uh, you know, Ryan's done a great job of being able to get this team down to the to the 53 of course you have your practice squad players but now when they show back up on monday and get ready for um our 10 10 10 practice have another day off and then back at it on wednesday you, it just feels different in practice there's just a little more uh tick to, to everything that goes on and, and there's a great energy so uh it's here all right well our first segment in the books on the bears coaches show the debut edition here in 2021 ryan pace and ted phillips our guests with head coach matt Nagy. traditionally throughout the course of the rest of the year we'll be joined by one of the three coordinators as well on the program and the back half of the program as has been the case we'll delve into more topics as we continue on previewing the bears season at 708 though time for wbbm's traffic and weather together with the eights here's trent Erickson. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show. It's brought to you by Whipley CPAs and Consultants, a proud partner of the Chicago Bears. Learn more at whipley.com. And we sincerely hope your Labor Day weekend has been enjoyable. This is our annual Labor Day special featuring Bears head coach Matt Nagy, general manager Ryan Payson, president and CEO Ted Phillips. As preparations get underway for the opener at SoFi Stadium in L.A. for the Bears and Rams, we'll have the call starting with our 4 p.m. pregame kickoff at 720 right here on WBBM. Uh, Ryan, uh, Health was key. You, you know, you, you're going to get some banged up guys. You're going to have some bumps and bruises. Some things going to knock guys out. But by and large, would you give it a thumbs up overall for health coming out of camp? Yeah, I would, Jeff. You know, we fortunately came out pretty healthy. I think, you know, by putting uh, Danny Trevathan and Tevin Jenkins on IR when we did, it allows us the possibility to bring them back this season. So that's big. And, you know, Tariq, you know, obviously he's on reserve PUP. So for him, that's any time after week six. But I think Overall, we came out healthy. You know, obviously there's some there's some luck that goes into that, but I think it's a credit also, you know, to our guys showing up in great shape for training camp. I think it's a credit to our athletic trainers and our strength coaches uh, doing their part. So we feel good about it. Matt, you're a big theme guy. You got one ready for the season? What do you got? And don't yeah, be scared. Um, and don't no, be scared. Yeah, don't be scared. <laughs> no, we talk about uh, in, in our in our. Uh, uh, with, within us, we talk about uh, being uncommon, and and we have a lot of different quotes and sayings that that we like to talk about. But I think that's one that that we've hit this year, and then some other ones too. Is just really uh, simply put, worry about today, and and when you do that, um, you're not worried about last year, you're not worried about next year. Uh, you heard me talk a little bit about that Giannis quote that he had, and I, I think it's powerful in so many different ways. But for our guys, Jeff, you've heard me and us as a, as a team and coaches, players, sports, have everybody talk about um, the, the, the amount of speed that we want to practice all year long. And so that's not so much of a quote as it is just a, a demeanor that we want to have everywhere we go. We want to, we want to be fast. And, and so um, our guys did a great job in training camp and uh, it's just about being together with all the teamwork. Well, that's a good dovetail into a question for Ryan because this team speed has gone way up. I think that's uh, not just uh, lip service. You look at the numbers on some of the offensive weapons, and it's it's pretty significant. 
Uh, does the final roster now properly reflect what Matt and his staff sought in all three phases and that you guys collaborated on? Yeah, you know, as we build the roster, you know, throughout the whole offseason, there's clear collaboration between the scouts and the coaches. And that collaboration goes through the offseason and it goes all the way down to this final 53 cut we just made. And, you know, it goes all the way down to just this past week, Jeff, when I look at a guy like Simba Webster, who we added for special teams and collaboration on that. And more speed, you just said, we added Brashad Perriman this week uh, to give us more speed at the receiver position. So there's, there's major collaboration throughout. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to pay off this season. Ted, let's talk about training camp. Uh, I thought, and I've said this many times already, publicly, on air, anyone that could hear it, I thought the layout, you guys used every square inch of real estate at, at, uh, at the facility to accommodate uh, the players, accommodate a visiting team in Miami and the fans. Um, what did you think of the whole process and the pros and cons of holding it on campus? Yeah, I think for the first time having training camp back at House Hall, Jeff, uh, my, my hat's off to all our staff. Uh, who put it together, worked out the logistics. I think overall it went really smooth. Um, it was a learning experience for all of us, but I think the fans enjoyed it. Um, it it's a more intimate experience. The bleachers are a little bit closer to the fields than they probably were at ONU. The downside is the number of fans that can be accommodated. Um, and it was, and you had to shuttle from remote parking lots, so that made it a little difficult. And we didn't know how to gauge how many free tickets that we should distribute to get, you know, we wanted upwards of 12, 1300 fans at a practice. Uh, we rarely reach that number, but it was a learning experience. So I think now we'll be able to take a look at the data, how many people convert those tickets into actually showing up. And uh, hopefully we can convince fans to stick around after practice go into the city of Lake Forest and the surrounding communities and make a day of it. Um, so overall, I would, I would say everyone did a great job organizing it. Um, hopefully the team liked it. It was still a little odd with COVID because the players couldn't get close to the fans. Hopefully that'll change next year. And, um, and we'll see about leaving the bleachers up or not. Um, it's something we have to talk about internally and discuss with the city of Lake Forest too. Yeah, that was one of my questions. Uh, it looks kind of cool with the, uh, the stands up on fields one and two, Matt and Ryan, did, that would be kind of cool to have uh, fans in there sometimes sponsors or whatever, watching you guys. Yeah, absolutely. No, the, the, the guys loved it. And we just appreciate all the fans that came out and were, were, uh, you know, there to support us. And it was just a, a a great time for the players, for the for the coaches, for all the fans, and we, we loved it. So it's neat to see those stands out there, and uh, we're we're always for that. Time for another break, fellas. It's seven eighteen. Time for WBBM's traffic and weather together on the gates. Here's Trent Erickson. Select single game Bears tickets are available. Cheer on the monsters of the midway live at Soldier Field this season. Visit chicagobearscom slash tickets for more info. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show brought to you by Whipley CPAs and Consultants. Gearing up for the 2021 regular season opener in L.A. Sunday night. Bears home opener next week at Cincinnati here. And our Labor Day special, not what we're used to, but we're sincerely looking forward to seeing all of you at Soldier Field in the near future. Typically, we'd have season ticket holders here and enjoy the program from Hallis Hall. Ryan, what impact did it have to sign a bunch of veterans on one-year deals? You've done this traditionally, but this year, really, to me, some narrow casting going on here, building depth, and in this case, some starters for opening night. Yeah, I think, you know, you look back, you know, most teams, Jeff, in the league had limitations in regard to salary cap this past offseason and you know, really challenged our personnel department to find players that can help our team and but also fit within some of those restraints that, you know, all teams had. And, I think of guys like Marquise Goodwin, Demir Bird, Damian Williams, Jesse James, Jason Peters, to name a few. You know, those guys will all have big roles this season that kind of came in that way, and, and we're expecting a lot from them. And Alec Ogletree, my goodness, what a splash, huh? For sure. You know, the way he came in and immediately had an impact, I think it speaks to him uh, being in great shape and our coaches quickly getting him ready to play. Ryan, it's been a uh, defensive-driven Franchise, honestly, uh, but do you see potential for offense to nudge forward now and maybe drive some of that personality of the team? Yeah, you know, a lot of our younger talent is on offense. You think of guys like Montgomery and Komet and Mooney. Uh, there, you know, there's a lot of talent on that side of the ball, and now it's about coming together uh, and you know, and improving and showcasing it this season. And Matt, are you a different coach in any way entering this season, in your opinion, 
And, and then as a play caller as well, uh, are you more refined given now the experience that you've uh, put under your belt? Yeah, you know, the experience for me is so valuable in so many different aspects, um, not just on game day, but just the day-to-day -day functions on how to handle your your staff and how to handle yourself and your time management, um, your, your delegations. And you build trust over time, not just with your players, but with your coaches too. And so um, I've really had a lot, you know, I've had three good years to be able to reflect on on where I feel like I've, I've done well and where I've struggled. And and so now I'm looking forward to being able to use that as I head into this fourth year as head coach and, and with this team. And I'm just so proud of uh, this, this whole organization um, just to be able to, to do this thing together. And um, and then as far as the, the play calling stuff, again, you know, it's the same type of deal. You, you, you understand where we're trying to get. You just touched on it offensively. You know, we want to be a lot better offensively than what we've been. And um and then that's going to start with me and, and being able to, uh, to to help the coaches out, to help the players out. And then on game day, it's about execution. So uh, all in all, we all got to do it together. And, uh, you know, just just excited for the opportunity. Game day is about Tuttyville, right, Matt? Tuttyville. You know it, Jeff. That, Tuttyville. That's what, we need to have more Tuttyvilles this year. We get that, we'll be all right. Uh, Ted, ownership and you have put a tremendous amount of trust in Ryan and Matt and uh, rewarded with that, with how they move from 20 to land a, a franchise type quarterback in Justin Fields without owning a top five pick, they worked the draft. Uh, what is your reflection on that? Take us back to draft night a little bit and knowing that Ryan definitely lives by a no regrets philosophy and he's proved that time and time again. He keeps it exciting, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, yes, I'll say he that, I'll tell you this that, you know, just seeing. Matt and Ryan and how they work together as they're entering their fourth season together. You can really see that trusting relationship. It was really fun during the whole off season to kind of see how they, how they just communicate and the way they communicated with myself and George McCaskey, uh, the openness, the honesty, the transparency um, really was um, appreciated. And draft day and the lead up to it was really exciting, right? I mean, the, the whole discussion, a lot of it during the off season was about the quarterback situation from looking at free agents to looking at possible trades and resulting in signing Andy Dalton and then drafting Justin Fields. You know, I, I think Ryan, he, he really hit it on the head pre-draft when he said, I think the sweet spot could be eight to 12 in the draft if we can move up there. And I think when the 49ers selected Trey Lance, the dominoes began to fall. Um, the selection process really moved quickly. And um, Ryan had already planned on what he wanted to give up. And when the phone calls started, it was really kind of tense, but it happened so fast. You didn't have a chance to get too nervous, but seeing the calmness that Ryan, Joey Lane had, manning the phones, turning down a couple offers, still hoping that Justin would be there. Um, and then when he was and the deal was struck, you know, the elation in that room was something I hadn't experienced to that level, you know, in the 38 years I've been with the Bears. So that was really special. And, uh, you know, the entire personnel department, Matt, Ryan, Joey Lane, they, they were just outstanding. They stayed calm. They did what needed to be done. They had a steady demeanor, and uh, it was really impressive to watch it and be part of it. We'll get Ryan's thoughts on taking big swings when we come back after a break here on the Bears Coaches Show as we bring you WBBM's traffic and weather together on the 8s at 728. Here's Trent Erickson. Kick off the 2021 season this Sunday night at our Miller Lite Headquarters Bar Outdoor Watch Party in Logan Square. Visit chicagobears.com slash fanzone slash wash parties for more info. Back of the Bears Coaches Show brought to you by Whipley CPAs and Consultants. Bears Rams Sunday, 720 at SoFi Stadium. WBBM Bears Radio pregame coverage beginning at 4. And good to have alongside uh, you as we get the ball rolling on 2021. Uh, Ryan, we were just talking before the break uh, about some of the things you do. You keep it exciting for sure. You like swinging for the fences. Why is that? I just think, you know, you look back, Jeff, we're always going to be persistent on making our team better. And there are certain ones that are more highlighted than others, but we're just as persistent and aggressive on, you know, all the moves we're making. And some of them might not get as much attention, but, you know, I can even go back to this practice this past week as we settled in our practice squad, just as aggressive there. And I think, you know, the longer I'm in this, you know, you're always learning and 
it's just about having that balance, you know, being aggressive and being decisive at the right time, but also being disciplined and thinking of our long-term future. And I think there's a balance there that's, that's important to strike. Hey, Matt, uh, growth from one year to the next varies by, by player and position, but if you can, can you name a couple guys where you've seen the greatest growth so far? I know it's hard to single out guys, but I know you got a couple on top of your mind. Yeah, I, I would say off the top, Jeff, you look at a guy like Cole Komet who came in last year and, you know, really just trying to learn this system and be able to, we always knew he had the talent, but can he put it, can he put the talent together uh, with the speed of the game and, and play by play? And he got better and better and better. And I think now he heads into this year and you're really going to see that and feel that with him uh, defensively. Uh, again, you look, you look at a guy defensively and in, in the same draft, same class as Jalen Johnson, uh, somebody who came out last year and uh, I think did a really good job. Uh, rookie year, but then was able to get into uh, this training camp and, and put a great training camp together. So I'm excited to see what he does. You have some young guys like a, a, a Jesper Horstead, right? Who, who our personnel did such a wonderful job at finding this guy as an undrafted free agent. And then our coaching staff able to develop him into a player. So, or somebody that we, we really believe had gives us great depth and, and a really good future possibly down the road. So those are the fun ones, and just to name a few, but there's a lot more, and, and I think uh, that that's part of the – that's one of the neatest parts of coaching and, and personnel. Ted, we touched down at the pandemic, obviously a, a handful for every franchise, every person in, in the world, frankly, but from a franchise perspective, the job done, what, say, what stays? I mean, you operate as a franchise on and off the field with different things based on the pandemic. What do you think stays forever? Yeah, well, I mean, one, one thing I think we've all learned is how to adjust and adapt at a moment's notice, no matter what the situation is. So that that will be something we'll take from this. Um, you know, the personalized contact that occurred with business partners and season ticket holders, I think that was actually a silver lining and a learning for us that moving forward, we, we always have to remind ourselves to listen and uh, communicate with our fans and understand how important they are. They're the lifeblood of the franchise, frankly. And, you know, listening to our employees is going to be important. Um, we're going to have staff start returning to Hallis Hall starting really tomorrow. Uh, it, some people will be here five, six, seven days a week. Other people may be here uh, less than that. Um, but I think the, the, the bottom line is we have to keep emphasizing that vaccinations are key. Um, we've done a good job there. Players, staff, 90 plus percent are vaccinated, but they're not in place to eliminate the possibility that you'll ever get COVID, but they have proven effective at reducing the likelihood of severe symptoms and hospitalizations. And that's going to be important for us to be able to keep the team safe going forward. That's the goal. Matt, what's your biggest challenge as a head coach this season, in your opinion? For us, I think, uh, Jeff, it, it's going to be really important that, you know, we understand the length of the season and that there's injuries and that, you know, there's highs and lows. But I'm really excited to see us try to get off to a fast start. And, and um, you know, with that comes leadership from the players which I've seen here in training camp. I love that about our guys. I mean, they're, they're really, and it's not talk. They're just out there. They're just doing it together. You see a different leader every day. You can see and feel our team growing. So, um, you know, the, the biggest thing is that. And then also just for, for all of us, our, our entire team, our players, our coaches, support staff, everyone just kind of stays in the moment, never gets too high, never gets too low. That'll be big and that'll be real. Uh, but we've been tested, Jeff. We've, had, we've been calloused the last couple of years. And we're going to use that 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 testing that we've had. We're going to use that to our benefit this year. All right, time for another break here for WBBM's Traffic and Weather Together on the 8th. Here's Abby Ryan. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show with head coach Matt Nagy, general manager Ryan Pace, and president and CEO Ted Phillips. Brought to you by Whipley CPAs and Consultants. Jeff Joniak with you here until 8 o'clock tonight. There's so much always circulating in this in this time and place in our world. How do you guys stay steady in an emotional business like this, because the emotion pours from the fans. It comes from the media as well, your own players, your own families, let alone your own team. Everything is very interesting and measured. Yeah. You know, I, when I think about that, Jeff, I think it goes back to the people, you know, you surround yourself with, and we work in a passionate environment and there's a lot of ebbs and flows in our business. And 
I also think that's when communication is so important. So I think of the communication between you know, George and Ted and Matt and I, you know, that's strong. So it's really, it's the communication and, and who you surround yourself with. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Um, that That's why I, I appreciate the support um, from George and Ted and Ryan. Uh, we have a, you know, the communication is phenomenal. I love it. I think it's great and you have to have it. And there's, there's times where there's tough conversations, but um, there's a trust and, and there's uh, honesty and um, you know, it's, it's, it's all about, you know, winning and making sure you're out there and having a good time. And inevitably we understand too, you know, there, there is the outside world and everybody uh, wants everything, you know, you know, wants to win, wants to win right now. And that's, that's the goal for all of us. So we're really looking forward to doing it together and um, you, you get a chance of doing that. And I know our players feel the same way. Ted, uh, sports betting deals, uh, opening up a new, very significant revenue stream, uh, probably most I would think since the stadium naming rights started becoming a thing, how how does this help you prepare as a team to compete for championships from a business perspective? Well, you know, I, I look at sports betting. It's just the latest of new sponsorship categories that are going to be here to stay. You know, even at the early stage of teams being allowed to strike local sports betting sponsorship deals, I have to say our sponsorship team, did a great job. First, they had to understand the sports betting landscape. They had to understand the league rules. They had to learn about the different companies involved. And when they did all that, it resulted in what's currently the largest sports betting uh, team deal in the NFL with Bet Rivers Casino. You know, sports betting is not, um, you know, in part of our DNA as a club, but we're going to do it the right way within the values of our organization. At the same time, realizing that it is a way of life and a very significant uh, future revenue stream, especially when Illinois starts to allow sports books um, in Chicago at their stadiums. You've already seen it um, possibly happen at in Major League Baseball at Wrigley Field. Hi, Ryan. Front office changes include uh, the addition of Ashton Washington through the Bill Walsh Diversity Fellowship. Um, Tell us about her in the scouting world because it's it's big news. It really is. Yeah, you know, for sure, Jeff. We made several promotions in the scouting department this offseason. Jeff King, pro director, Sam Somerville, national scout. Uh, Brandon Rehor, Midwest scout, and, and Drew Racina became the combine scout. But the addition of Ashton, um, you know, I go back to it, you know, uh, Josh Lucas, Champ Kelly, Mark Sadowski, and Sue Campbell, they did a good job researching different candidates uh, for a training camp fellowship program that we have. And uh, obviously they came across Ashton and she came in this training camp and made a really awesome impression right away in her short time here. Uh, she comes to us from Texas Tech. Um, so she'll she'll be added as a scouting assistant. And we're just really excited to have her on board. And Ted, growing number of women now in the NFL almost every week you hear about some department. Uh, how has this change impacted everyone's approach and thinking? Well, you know, it's it's not just um, women. Um, it's it's uh, actually having more of an emphasis on, on diversity, equity, and inclusion, which includes women and, and minorities. And it's one of our um, main topics of focus going forward. I like to look at it as it's creating diversity of thought. You get thought from new different areas. You get new ideas uh, when you believe in diversity and the value it can bring to a club. All right, Matt, best moment at training camp for you and your team. Uh, anything behind the scenes, a funny moment that, or, or something that happened that brought you guys closer together? Yeah, so Jeff, we had a, we had a few speakers come in and, and talk to the team. And um, there's some moments in there when, when these guys are able to talk and reach our players from different backgrounds and different experiences and different ages too. Uh, we had Alex Smith, who was here. He had a phenomenal discussion with the team. Uh, just about living today, right? Live, live in the moment. And um, he had a great message. And then we, we brought in Udonis Haslam from the Miami Heat. And he hit it from a perspective of what it takes to be leaders in the locker room. And it was fascinating. Uh, and then we had CL Shep come in, who's a keynote speaker across the world, not just the country. And he, he hit a lot of stuff, uh, not just from teamwork side, but from off the field. And, you know, it was just really neat for me, Jeff, to be able to see the faces and the note taking from our players. And then when, when these guys were done talking, the amount of players that we had wait to go talk to them afterwards, 
or or to, there was a couple players too without getting into privacy there was a couple players that actually asked to talk to them in a room by themselves when, when you see that that's real and that's powerful and, and that that's what it's all about so that was pretty neat uh, and that, you know that was off the field but it was pretty cool all right, one more segment to go. We've got to step away for WBBM's traffic and weather together on the eights with Abby Ryan. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show with Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace, and Ted Phillips, brought to you by Whipley CPAs and Consultants. I'm Jeff Joniak, and now it's time to look ahead, brought to you by Bet Rivers, the official sports book partner of the Bears. The Bears one and two against the Rams over the last three years. The last time the Bears opened a season against the Rams, 1950, when George Hallis coached his team to a 24-20 win at LA Memorial Coliseum. So let's talk about the Sunday night opener, Matt. Uh, SoFly, you were there last year. Some of us were not able to see that place. I hear it's spectacular. We'll be there to call the game. Uh, what do you need to see Sunday from your guys? Yeah, so obviously there's going to be a ton of energy. It's a primetime game Sunday night uh, playing there last year in SoFi Stadium. There were no fans there, but it's beautiful inside. It'll be loud. Uh, it's just like a, a heavyweight boxing match, in my, my opinion. It's going to come out, and people are going to come out swinging. But you got to you got to be able to uh, to to play you know to, to box all twelve rounds and so for our guys it's going to be a really cool moment for us to go out there and get started uh, but in, in all three phases not just one or the other and then, and stick together and and ride through the highs and the lows but it's uh, it's just really neat that football's back we're 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 excited to be a big part of it on Sunday night we got a big challenge here with the LA Rams they're well coached and they got a lot of great players and uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. Matt, we've seen Andy Dalton for uh, now 10-plus seasons as he begins his 11th year as a starting quarterback again with the Bears. Uh, any behind the scenes that we may not have learned about Andy Dalton throughout the course of his career that you have learned? Uh, nothing behind the scenes other than what, what he does is he just comes to work every day and just tries to, to be the best teammate he can be. He's, he's, you know, he's definitely won over his teammates, and they respect him. Uh, they, they understand he's here. He's a true professional. He does things the right way. Uh, and, and again, I think uh, on, on Sunday night, being able to see him go out there and, 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 and play with his teammates and be a part of this thing will be real. He has a lot of experience. He's seen a lot of different defenses and he's played in some primetime games. So uh, we're, we're, uh, I know he's excited. Our players are excited and we want to do it all together. Ryan, what do you see as the greatest improvement that you're looking for specifically on this team that will translate into what you want to see in the win column? You know, we've increased competition in all areas and, and got better as a football team. And I think, you know, go to the quarterback room. And I think it, things like getting Eddie Goldman back is significant for us. And, you know, we talked about adding speed to the receiver position and just that vision, Jeff, that it all adds up to us playing as a complete team. And, you know, that equating to wins is, you know, is what we expect. And Ted, uh, new visits to LA and Vegas uh, as the stadiums, those are uh, maybe part of the weekend checklist for you. I don't know if you went last year to SoFi, but uh, with these new stadiums, you'll learn new things for fan experiences and not unlike building your facility schools, I'm sure check it out, see what, what they could take uh, from it and uh, what you're, what you're thinking on these new stadiums in the league. Yeah. You know, we, we want to see those what kind of new fan amenities are in place. We're always looking for ways, like you said, to enhance our fans' experience um, in the stadium and outside of the stadium. And, uh, you know, you touched on how our staff, um, including Ryan, visited a number of facilities when we planned for the expansion of Hallis Hall, and that was immensely beneficial. So, you know, going to L.A. and Vegas would be exciting, um, you know, given that those teams are in the midst of welcoming fans back to new buildings for the first time. Um, It'll be it'll be fun to see the game day experience, but in the future we might plan some trips to you know really dig deep into what they did and why they did it. Um, so it should be exciting. It's a great way to start the season. Ryan, I think my count is 15 players with eight years or more of experience on this roster, and it's interesting how it's paired though per position with a young player to, to lean on maybe for guidance and experience, insight. But there's a significant core of young players that I think we all agree are ready to pop. What does that mean for this team moving forward? Yeah, you know, you think of young guys like Komet, Jalen Johnson, Roquan, Mooney, Bilal, to name a few. They're not just good players, but they're emerging as leaders of our team. And that's exciting when you look at the future, you know, those guys stepping up. And I think it's a good mixture, too, though, of the vets. You know, you reference that. You know, you got high-character guys like Jimmy Graham, Tishon Gibson, Jason Peters recently, and they're mentoring that younger group. So it's a good mix, you know, as we build along the way. 
we got to talk a little bit of scout on the Rams. Uh, Sean McVay, creative, uh, moving all over the place with his offense. I'm sure we'll see a bunch of fly sweeps. And But Matthew Stafford standing in that pocket. A little yeah. interesting, isn't it? No, it is. And, and uh, you know, Sean McVay does a great job of being able to scheme guys open and get guys in spots they need to be at. And, and you know, and, of course, he brings in Matthew Stafford, who we know and playing against uh, a lot of these years from Detroit. So, uh, again, they're going to be a team that is going to come out and do everything they can to keep you off balance on offense. And then let's not forget, too, defensively, right? They had the number one defense in the NFL last year, and their special teams is – is tops in the league. So we understand where we're coming from there. Uh, and, and I think that that's how we like it. You know, we want to be able to have a, a, a great challenge and it's uh, our guys are going to be prepared for it. And, but we have a lot of respect for the Rams and they do a great job. All right. I'm going to give each of you a, a chance to give a final message as we wind down our first show of the year here on the bears coaches show, final message to fans about uh, what uh, this team might be, what they think they'll enjoy. We'll start with Matt. Yeah. I think the biggest thing Jeff for us is, we just appreciate all the support and just the, the excitement that you feel right now in the city for this team. And our, our players are just uh, internally motivated right now to just go out and play so hard for each other and for the city and for, for our coaches and just really do it together. It's time. So we're, we're looking forward to a great season and would love the support. And uh, we're looking forward to getting it started week one. You know what? It's finally here. You know, it's, there's been so much build and ex excited to get the fans back. I think, the support they give us is energizing. We all feel it. We honestly missed it all last year. Uh, and starting this week, you know, our goal is to make them proud, you know, make them excited, make them walk into work on Mondays and be and be fired up to be a Bears fan. Walk into school on Monday, be fired up to bear, be a Bears fan. So that's our goal, and, and we're just excited to get started. Yep. Uh, I agree with Matt and Ryan. You know, we want to win. Uh, that's, the, that's what we're here to do. Um, we want to see the veteran players reach their ceiling. We want to see growth from the young players. Um, we want to see a disciplined, focused team in all three phases. Add in some little bit of luck, a little bit of good health. We've got a quality depth of talent at, at many, many positions. Um, and having the fans come back to kind of re rekindle the social interactions they've missed, right? And to bring that energy and joyfulness to Soldier Field. It's going to be exciting. So let's look forward to a great season. We're ready to go. Go Bears. All right, fellas. Appreciate all your time. For Bears head coach Matt Nagy, president and CEO Ted Phillips, and general manager Ryan Pace, producers Dan Brilli, Jordan Treadup, Andy Gersher. I'm Jeff Joniak. Thank you so much for listening tonight. And thank you, everybody, our season ticket holders and sponsors for your patience and understanding during these challenging times. Proud to say we'll talk to you from L.A.'s SoFi Stadium Sunday, a 4 o'clock pregame with Ron Gleason, Jim Schwantz, and Jay Hogenberg, along with myself and Tom Thayer in the 720 kickoff live from L.A. That'll do it tonight. Good night, everybody. This is News Radio 105.9 WBBM.